Let's go live now to Peter McGoran and Simon Banks. Uh, more reaction to the story, the departure of Mark McGowan. A bit of a surprise, Peter. But how um, do you reflect on what has been a, a dominant era for the Labor Party under Mr McGowan? It's a shock. It's not even a surprise. But it's pretty weird too. What's Premier McGowan tired of? Trampling a five-member opposition? It, it doesn't make a lot of sense and we'll take him at face value and allow him to depart with, without any other suggestion other than he's exhausted. But I think there's a story there. He's been Premier for six years, and leader of the opposition for ten. Hasn't he heard of a holiday, even a six-week holiday? I'm sorry, I'm finding this all pretty bizarre. Simon, your thoughts? Well, I think any of the state premiers who went through the COVID experience know what an intense experience that was. I mean, Peter Gutland, for example, in Tasmania, effectively uh, made the same decision uh, a bit over a year ago. So I, I think, you know, we, we do underestimate the, uh, the cost that comes to people both personally and their families in these sorts of leadership positions. Uh, I think as everyone who knows in WA, if Mark had wanted to stay on and carry through to the next election, he would have done it with the full and strong support of the Labor caucus. He was in a very strong and uh, dominant position uh, within WA. Uh, but now there's going to be a new Premier, a new challenge. Uh, 20 months as he flagged until the next state election campaign. The good news is, is the WA Labor team have got some excellent talent, I think, to, to draw upon. It will be uh, incredibly big boots to fill. I just hope that whoever is uh, elected the leader, I guess, charts their own course. And that's one of the successes, I think, of Marx himself, is that he charted his own course, uh, I think became deeply loved by the Australian people, uh, the West Australian people because of the role that he played, particularly during COVID. But he's made that state economically strong. And that's the key to his success. Peter McGoran, sceptical about uh, why it's all happening. But I guess it, it is a surprise, though, isn't it, when it, you've got a, such a popular leader leaving on their own terms... Shouldn't it be something that politicians do more often, Peter? He can go out and have another career, maybe earn some money. Quite possibly. Richo referenced Peter Beattie and Bob Carr, but they all did 10 years. Look, if, if it is genuine exhaustion, then it's a pity because a, a person of obvious talent and capacity and experience is lost to public life, even if he's on the other side to me. And I just wonder if that is the reason, then... He's been a one-man band for too long, and that does seem to be the trend of premiers. They need to delegate more. Andrews is the same. You vote for Andrews, not the Labor Party. McGowan, you vote for him, the strong man of COVID, uh, not for his team. Um, so I think the trend's wrong. If these people are going to take on the role of uh, the almighty, then they're going to suffer a, a psychological and physical burnout in all probability. Does it make it harder, Simon, for Labor at the federal election, at the next federal election, to maintain, to retain the seats that they picked up last year? Well, if you think about it, there's every chance that the next uh, West Australian election and the next federal election could be in pretty close alignment with, with another Kieran. So, like, it will because there's no doubt that the perception around Mark and the strong performance of the government over there helped Labor. I mean, the fact that effectively... Uh, he and, uh, and the other members of that team, um, uh, Ben Wyatt in particular, the former treasurer over there, turned the state finances of WA around, put it into a strong position, actually, you know, built uh, a very strong economic position in WA. That helped counter some of the, I guess, natural perceptions that might exist in other parts of the Australian community about Labor's economic competence and performance. There is no doubt that that helped. So, look... Not having him there, I think, you know, will make life harder for, for Labor federally at the next federal election. But it's going to come down to the performance of, uh, of his replacement. I mean, I think we've seen, for example, you know, if you take someone like Gladys Berejiklian, who was extraordinarily popular in New South Wales, a successor leader even one who comes in after, in that case, Mike Baird, who is very popular, if they do well, they can still perform well in the minds of the community. So it's really going to be up to whoever his successor is to chart their own course. But does it give the Liberals some hope in the West, a place where that's been... hasn't been flowing very freely for the Liberals in recent times, Peter? Um, agree entirely, Kieran, with that proposition. It does give them a chance. St still, as... 
as Simon suggests, a lot of ground to make up if they put in a popular a, a, a successor uh, to McGowan, such as Roger Cook, uh, who's, you know, straight from Hollywood central casting. Uh, but it does give them purpose and renewed energy and hope, if they're good and smart enough. And at the federal level too, would you would you extend it to that? I know that generally electors, electorates and, and voters, they do make a, a differentiation between state and federal, but McGowan was the sort of figure that, that, that lifted the Labor vote and elevated the Labor vote more broadly at the federal level too. Agreed. More so than the eastern states. If Andrews goes, I wouldn't expect there to be an automatic uplift in the federal vote. Uh, although it wouldn't hurt, uh, but McGowan represented in Western Australia a particular uh, political philosophy and action. So, yes, I think there is a potential for all Liberal uh, votes to rise on the tide of McGowan's retirement. Simon, is there a chance as well that it hurts the, the Yes campaign? Because McGowan advocating a Yes vote obviously brings a bit more... Uh, gravitas to that position in WA as well, given the standing he has in the electorate. Yes, but I think there's a wider thing going on inside Western Australia, which is that because of its connections into the mining industry, because it's actually worked and operated under a native title system uh, now for some 30 years, where you do actually have to consult and talk with Indigenous uh, traditional owners about what you're going to do with your project, and you do need to get their support if you possibly can. I think there is a culture of listening in WA uh, around these issues which goes beyond the leader of the day. I think the mining sector is very keen to actually therefore see uh, this referendum pass and I think you'll see that sector standing up over the course of the next few months making that very clear. So yes, I've got no doubt that Mark's advocacy or, or if he were to participate still in the referendum campaign that would still be valued. I think Ben White in particular, and Ken Wyatt as well, obviously, there, a former Liberal Indig Indigenous Affairs Minister. I think their contribution to the WA debate will be really important as well. But I think it's one of the reasons why, when you look at, the, I guess, the polling in relation to the referendum, many people historically would have put Western Australia in the same camp as a place like Queensland. I think there is a slightly different mood this time around in Western Australia. Peter McGoran, your reflections on that and the, the impact on that huge vote looming in the the second half of this year? On balance, I don't think McGowan was going to shift the dial for a yes vote to any greater extent. He had a personal following, um, so he would have had a marginal influence. I disagree with Simon. I don't think Western Australia uh, will vote a majority yes. It will align with Queensland as the two states to vote no. Uh, so where do you find the third state to vote no to to uh, reject the referendum. I, would, I can't speculate like that on the moment. It's a softening uh, vote for the Yes campaign, but it's still a clear majority, and we've got a long way to go. It's up, but the voices of politicians and advocates and sports organisations, I think, are beginning to be play less of a, a dominant role, and it's people now having to educate themselves, show an interest, and make a decision that will determine the outcome once and for all.